So absolutely enormous news from Warhammer Fest today. Let's take a look at a new Space Marine Dreadnought, Primaris Stern Guard Veterans, a Zonethrope Hive Tyrant, and many other forms of new Tyranid Beastie. Let's look through the full contents of 10th edition's launch box, Leviathan. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about Games Workshop's newly revealed 10th edition launch box. This is the Tyranids vs Space Marine 1 for 10th edition, the name confirmed as Leviathan, and it certainly does look like a big nid party. Here's a big picture of the contents of the box, we've got the Space Marines on the left and the Tyranids on the right. The bugs are far outnumbering the Space Marines, though the Marines that are fighting them really are quite elite and have a few more characters. In terms of general feel and scope, this box does feel similar if not slightly bigger than Indomitus. I was strongly suspecting that it would be on the upper side of things, judging by just how many things that we saw in that preview teaser. And broadly speaking, just about everything that we saw in that cinematic has actually come in the box. And now we actually have the confirmed identity on those combi weapon and flamer primaris, the big dreadnought, and another four or so flavours of Tyranid Beast. Going through the contents of the box, this one will be the one that's available for 10th edition's launch. Judging by the Horus Heresy release last time, it'll probably be in around about 2-4 to four weeks before it actually goes up for pre-order, and then it might have an extended pre-order window, as they often do with their biggest sets. I'd expect the miniatures in here to be monopose. Games Workshop generally does that with their biggest sets, as it saves space, and it means that they can have bigger, more impressive boxes. So you get lots of cool sculpts, but a bit less customizability than the individual box releases. In the box set, we've got 25 Space Marine miniatures and 47 Tyranids, though I would say that the average Space Marine miniature is a bit chunkier than the Tyranid one, though the Nids do have some big models too. Running down the cast for the Space Marines, it's almost entirely as I was suspecting. A Terminator Captain and Librarian, Phobos Lieutenant and Gravis Apothecary, there isn't any Ancient in this one. There's 10 Inferno squads of Space Marines, the ones with the Flamers, the 5 Terminators with their Assault Cannon and Teleport Homer, and five Stern Guard veterans, these ones are Primaris, but are basically just called Standard Stern Guard now. Then, carrying the heavy lifting for the Space Marines, I suppose, we've got this Ballistus Dreadnought, an enormous great big Redemptor with missiles and last cannons. On the Tyranid side, it really is a very horny box indeed. We've got a winged Tyranid Prime that was shown off. The great big Psyker Bug is indeed in the box, and it's called a Neura Tyrant, and it comes with two Neuraloids. I've not seen that written down, but that sounded like what they said. There's 20 termagants in here, so really quite hoardy. Each of those kits comes with a set of rippers on it, so there's two ripper swarms in the box. There's 11 of a new gaunt class called Neuragaunts, small clawed ones. Five of another new gaunt class called Barbagaunts, sort of light artillery tyranids. A big munching feeder beast called a Psychophage. The brutal screamer killer Carnivex with its psychic scream. And then three of those stealthy infiltration Von Ryan's Leapers. Then, along with all that in the box, we've also got the Warhammer 40k core book. That's a 392-page hardback, so really quite a hefty tome there. That mission battle deck that they showed off the other day, and also a set of transfer sheets as well for your Space Marines. Overall, it really is quite a meaty box. Might mean that it's perhaps a little bit more expensive than people might have hoped for. But judging by the last two 8th and 9th edition launch boxes, generally the miniatures here have been about as discounted as Games Workshop ever gets, which is particularly nice for entirely new sculpts. Before we get stuck into Tyranid models, I thought I would just quickly mention that the Leviathan launch box will be the subject for the channel giveaway in June. Seems like a nice big exciting one that people are going to want, so I thought we'd do six copies of that. Stick around to the end of the video where I'll tell you how you can enter to win one if you'd like to. Let's go over all this new stuff in turn then, and first up we have a Psychophage, the new feeder beast type thing that was busy eating a space marine in the trailer. Kind of as suspected, this is a bit of a secondary organism that's not really meant to be on the front line of the invasion. This one's job is to track down and consume psychically attuned organisms. This one with its mouth tentacles appears to be consuming a bit of space marine there. Appearance wise, it almost looks like a bit of a giant tick, but with tentacles coming out of a big bitey mouth. It's got some spore chimneys on the back, which might have some sort of rule for debuffing it to hits or something like that. And they did mention that in-game it would get some sort of damage buff against Psychers when it's fighting them, though I guess that might be a little bit hard to coordinate a big monster into getting to grips with. It's really quite a big beast, as you could see by the previous full-scale picture. It's this one and the Screamer Killer Carnifex variant that look like they're the biggest miniatures in the box on the Tyranid side. There is just the one of them on the box, I think there were two on the reveal trailer, but just the one in a single box of Leviathan. Next up, we've got some little guys called Barbgaunts. These guys again were seen in the reveal trailer, and I thought that they were a re-sculpted Biovore when we first saw them. 
These guys definitely do share a whole bunch of appearance similarities with them, and their role is really quite similar as well. They basically are a light biovore, but on a gaunt type chassis. Apparently they're short-ranged anti-infantry artillery, with a focus on suppressing fire. I'd guess they're probably going to have some sort of special rule where if you hit a squad it might be debuffed in some way, maybe minus one to hit, or go slower or something. In the reveal, they called the gun a biocannon, not sure if that's specifically what they're calling this, or if they're just referring to all Tyranid guns as biocannons, as that's what they're known as. As with just about all Tyranid organisms, it is a separate weapon beast to the bearer. This one's mounted in a slightly unusual way, with one hand being plugged into it, so the thing walks on three legs normally. Looks like they come in a squad of five, and are apparently mounted on 40mm bases. My guess is that they probably wouldn't be battle line type units if they're artillery. Might be more akin to heavy support in previous editions. That's not the only variant of Gaunt coming though, as we also have Neurogaunts apparently. These ones looked kind of similar to little running Hormagaunts in the teaser trailer, and seem to attack in a very similar way with great bounding leaps jumping onto the Dreadnought. In the teaser trailer that they showed off, there appear to be 11 of these little guys. Apparently there's 10 in the main squad and one single node beast in the middle, which is sort of like an alpha for the squad, where the will of the synapse gets through that one to the rest of them. Apparently the purpose of these guys is to sort of be an attendant swarm to a greater synapse creature, hang out nearby and somehow be able to tank hits for them. They say that the law is that they throw themselves in the way of damage. The models look like nice disturbing little swarms, I think. They've got a main gaunt body with a parasitic neurocyte that's mounted on their back, which controls them and basically has them completely at the subservient will of the bigger organism. I guess these ones are even more enthralled to the hive minds than the standard gaunt somehow. Next up, and perhaps one of the big bads of the box and the Space Marine trailer, is the Neuro Tyrant. Again, was an interesting one to see in action, as it basically bested the Space Marine Librarian in the fight. A great big zone throw upon steroids, with an enormous brain and a big spiked crown, flanked by two little attendant organisms. I was wondering what this guy might represent in terms of fitting in with the rest of the Tyranid army, whether it might be something like the Doom of Malantyre reimagined, but it turns out that this thing is apparently aims to be the Zonethrope version of a Hive Tyrant essentially. The model comes with two little accessory brain things called Neuraloids or something similar, again I've not really seen that one written down yet, and as I had seen people discussing before, it does look kind of similar to the Zonethrope thing that they also showed off at the preview, this one's a very retro Tyranid Zonethrope, it's got a similar sort of brain look going on. Looks like a pretty creepy centerpiece to me, plenty of cosmic horror going on with this guy. Along with all the bigger bugs for the Tyranids, we've also got the Rippers shown off as well. These ones were kind of pictured in a couple of teaser shots that they'd done before, but they hadn't actually talked about them. Not really too much to say about these guys, other than they look maybe just a little bit more dynamic and a bit more detailed than the current ones that we have. It still appears that you get just one base of these per Termagant squad, and in the game pictures, it looks like they're pictured with the squad as opposed to running in their own unit. Might imply that the datasheet that had the rippers on it might be the standard Termagant one, though we'll wait and see there. Lastly for the Tyranids, and certainly one of the most imposing models, is the Tyranid Screamer Killer. It isn't labelled as a Carnifex in the official naming or anything. It isn't replacing the standard Carnifex, it's just a different variant that's maybe a little bit more hefty. Dedicated melee mites, plus of course the bioplasmic scream that it can bathe its space marine enemies in, and basically aiming to be a brutal reinterpretation of the ancient Screamer Killer miniature from Games Workshop's days past. I was wondering how this would be executed, I feel like it does actually look pretty decent with this miniature, I feel like they've done well with it, perhaps one that they did need to work a little bit to get right with that slightly awkward looking arm setup, certainly doesn't look like something that I particularly want charging at me head on. Finally for the Tyranids, while we're on the subject of them, it was interesting to note that they revealed that the combat patrol set for Tyranids in 40k 10th edition will be this set, basically a subset of the launch box for Leviathan, but not all of it. Looks like in combat patrol Tyranids we'll have that Neurophage, the Wing Prime, 20 Termagants and 2 Rippers, 5 of the Barbagaunts, and 3 of those Bomb Ryan's Leapers. Looks like a fairly respectable set to me to be honest, but doesn't include literally everything in the launch box, it doesn't have things like the Screamer Killer and those Neurogaunts and things, so it's not literally everything. Space Marines next though, and the Astartes also gets plenty of things to face off these new Tyranid threats, and as suspected they are going to be led up by a Terminator Captain. Again, they're a guy from the reveal trailer, this guy painted up in the heraldry of the Ultramarines Captain of the First Company. As with the other previous launch boxes and big sets that Games Workshop tend to do for Space Marines, 
None of them have any chapter-specific sculpted iconography, so you could equally paint them all up as Blood Angels, Dark Angels, or whatever else. The Terminator Caption, I think, is a fairly decent sculpt. Big Angry Space Marine Leader armed with a Storm Bolter and Power Sword. Classic weapons there. Just about ornate enough to denote him as a captain, and he's got a fair amount of Tyranid stuff on his base. Instead of a tactical rock on his right foot, he seems to have gone with a tactical Tyranid head. I guess you could probably re-sculpt that a bit if you didn't want him to be stomping Xenos skulls into the ground permanently on your board. Manning the battle line on this box set, at least, seems to be the Space Marine Inferno Squad. Again, a unit that we're pretty certain was going to be coming from the reveal trailer. A full squad of Space Marines armed with the fancy Pyre Blasters, the flamethrower-type weapon that the Black Templar Space Marines had in the previous edition. Really quite a lot of close-range barbecuing goodness there. It's kind of an interesting prospect to be bringing in entire squads of Space Marine Flamers. I guess you'd be very, very good at melting through hordes, though really struggling with anything too heavy. I'm sure Salamander's players will be having a good time with these, though, and have been jealously eyeing up the Black Templar's Flamer Marines for quite a while. I think the guns look pretty nice, to be honest. Maybe the only slightly questionable bit is the way that they have to hold their hands just above the flame grill for them. Can't help but think that that might get quite hot, even through a bit of ceramide. I'm kind of interested as to whether or not these guys are going to be battle line and kind of considered troops or not. On the stream, they seems to liken them to intercessors. They are armed with anti-infantry weapons, just maybe a slightly higher volume of it, I suppose. We have seen a couple of rules previewed for them already as well. They're only objective control one, which might imply otherwise, and they might not be battle line. Things like intercessors have had two so far. The profile for the Pyre Blaster has also been shown off as well. D6 shots at strength 5, AP 0, and damage 1 with the Torrent rule, which I guess is the new Flamer one, plus also ignoring cover. Should be pretty helpful against anyone taking shelter in ruins or anything. Another very interesting release are these new Primaris Stern Guard veterans. I call them Primaris because most of their armour is, there certainly is supposed to be updates, but it's interesting that along with the Terminators, these guys have got no Primaris in their name, and unlike the majority of Space Marine Primaris models, these guys have actually acquired a few bits of armour plates from other marks of armour, such as the guy on the top left who's got a more classic Space Marine helm going on. The Space Marines here are armed with a few combi weapons. It looks like we've got two standard bolters, one combi plasma and one combi melter on the sergeant, and then one heavy looking guy who's got a heavy bolter. These miniatures are going to be monopose, so you won't be able to have the option of changing out different combi weapons for these guys at least. If they are just really being rebranded just as Stern Guard veterans full stop, then it might be that they're going to actually release a full multi-part plastic kit to follow this one up to give you a whole ton of flexible options. If that's the case, I guess it's not impossible that the current Firstborn Stern Guard kits might go, as it's actually be one of the first examples of a Battle Line Space Marine unit being just entirely replaced by a Primaris equivalent. I guess we'll wait and see on that front. At least in this loadout, they do look like they're quite an anti-infantry focused unit, a little bit of plasma and melter to round out the damage, unless they have those consolidated combi weapon profiles that we saw on the Librarian. Next up, and fresh from being mauled by a whole bunch of Von Ryan's Leapers, is something called an Apothecary Biologus. He's the Gravis Armoured Apothecary, who apparently does have some slightly different lore to the standard ones. As with the reveal trailer, it looks like his main job is to collect samples of organic matter from Xenos species to assist the Imperium in combating them. As per 40k's new character rules, he's going to be a leader model, and he can attach to Gravis Armoured Troops. It'll be interesting to see exactly what his rules are. Apparently, the rules are that he doesn't focus on healing units, but he gives them some sort of buff in fighting certain foes. Feels like it could be a bit weird if it winds up an apothecary essentially is functioning like a space brewing captain. I guess it had to do at least some of the things that a regular apothecary would. But of course, we don't know the 10th data sheet for either this or the standard one. Should be a decent amount tougher though, what with that Gravis armour. Next up, we've got a great big shooty dreadnought called the Ballistus Dreadnought. This one, I guess, is the natural evolution from Redemptor to the Brutalis. And now this guy's the dedicated range one. Great big glass cannons on the right arm and a bunch of missiles on the left. Very much harking back to the old boxy dreadnought, but updated onto the new frame. And it's also got some storm bolters like the regular Redemptor. From the look of him, this guy looks like he's going to be fairly dedicated anti-tank, unless you can swap out between frag and crack for those missiles. I guess being a new funky Primaris thing, it might have the super frag and super crack type missiles that we saw on the Desolators. I'd guess at some point we might well get a multi-part plastic kit for this guy as well. If I had to gamble, then seeing this guy with a bunch of really big chunky auto cannons, I think could be a possibility. Perhaps the other most iconic Space Marine Dreadnought that you could field at range in ages past. 
That's it for the Space Marines, besides the stuff that we already know about, the Phobos Lieutenant, the Librarian, and the Terminators, but we still have a few bits more detail about the box and the book. The Leviathan rulebook that will be in this box is going to be a special edition of the new Warhammer 40k core rulebook. This one looks like it's an absolutely enormous tome, 392 pages, so you don't really want to be going dropping it on any miniatures that you value the lives of. It sounds like it's going to have the normal 40k core book stuff, nice miniature galleries and lore on several different factions, all the core rules on the game, though they should be available to download digitally independently as well, so that might not be the most relevant thing in the world but apparently it's also going to have a crusade supplement as well. Narrative details of the Fourth Tyrannic War, plus a bunch of narrative missions that you can play along as well to represent the Tyranids versus the Space Marines. Really quite a big hefty tome this one, I certainly would have expected one of these in the box. Apparently the narrative crusade section will be available separately in its own book, which they have shown us the cover of. They didn't really go too far into the whole lore of the box set, but they did give us a few teaser details. Apparently there's going to be a book to go alongside to tell us what happens, and the story of the box set is supposed to represent a space marine counter-attack against a world being overrun by Tyranids, and basically trying to cut down a whole load of biohorrors, deny the Tyranids biomass, and drain resources from the encroaching hive fleets. The Phobos Lieutenant, who looks like a tyrannic war veteran, apparently he's going to be an individual who was already present on the planet, and then there's going to be a relief force of Terminators and characters to try and help the world out. I guess he's probably going to be a major character in this book, as I do notice that he's fairly prominent on the front cover. Finally, for the big box contents, it does come with a set of those 10th edition mission cards that we were talking about just the other day. A 66 card mission deck, the ones with the deployment, primary missions and secondary missions and things, plus those new gambit things where you can gamble a whole load of points on trying to do something unlikely. I think it's pretty helpful that they come in the box as well, as it sounds like they're going to be instrumental for actually playing Warhammer 40k. And while they were talking about the missions, they did say that the other options were playing the standard only war mission in the book, which is a nice simple one and that also Crusade narrative missions, they would still exist as well, so they're not being replaced by this card set. Overall, I feel like they've done a pretty good job with this one. Looks like they're basically trying to make another version of Indomitus, maybe even bigger and badder than that one, to be honest. The amount of miniatures in this box is certainly on the upper end of what I was predicting. I didn't think that the Tyranids would necessarily get a whole 30 swarms in the box, plus all three of the big beasties that we'd seen in the trailer. Looks like it's going to be very, very popular. The mission deck will certainly be a nice to have as well, and I'll certainly be looking to pick one up myself to get my hands on some Space Marines. Hopefully they will have managed to produce enough of them this time. With Indomitus, that was a bit of an issue last time, but I feel like with their enormous releases, they're probably going to play it at least a bit safer than they have in the past. They know demand is going to be absolutely crazy for this, and the focus is on it a lot more squarely compared with other recent releases. Fingers crossed that people can actually get their hands on it, or they'll follow up with a made-to-order print run, as they did with Indomitus in the end. Let me know your thoughts on the box in any case, does it live up to the hype? And just while we're on the subject of it, I will just talk about the Leviathan box giveaway, which I'll be doing for June. And I thought that seeing as a box as big and exciting as this doesn't come around every single time, we'll make the June giveaway for the channel an extra big one. No less than six copies of the Leviathan box this time round. Bigger and more investment than the usual giveaways, but you don't get a box as good as this every day. As always, with the Allspets Tactics channel giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, both of them links down in the video description. Either you can support the channel on Patreon for any amount whatsoever. It helps keep these videos coming, and allows me to keep on making Warhammer content as my main thing. Supporting on Patreon gets you automatic entry to each giveaway every month. Otherwise, there's also a free entry option to support the channel via social media, subscribe to Allspets Tactics on YouTube, like the channel's Facebook page, which is linked down in the video description, and then to actually enter the draw, a giveaway post appears on the 1st of June. To enter via the freeway, reply to that giveaway post with a photo of any 40k miniature, along with your name and the date handwritten within the same photo. The last bit is just to deter Facebook bots, and ensure the prizes go to real hobbyists. After that, I put all the entries together, both Patreon and Facebook, put all the entries into a random number generator, and announce the result on a channel update video around about the 4th of June. My guess is that this box will actually get posted out sometime mid to late June, so basically the box sets will be dispatched when I get them, it will be a little bit of a wait between the draws announcement and when these are actually dispatched. In any case, check out the links in the description if you're interested, there's still a chance to enter for the Lion giveaway for the start of May. You can still enter for that either on Patreon or on Facebook on the 1st of May, as always. 
In any case, pretty momentous news there. Let me know what you make of all the Space Marine and Tyranid goodness, and I'll most certainly be following this up with a bunch of other videos on various bits out of the previews. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the 40k videos coming just about every day. And finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel and you want to help keep them coming, the Patreon page is linked in the video description. People who sign up get other things besides the giveaways, access to a unique role on the Discord server, seeing certain videos early, and regular votes for what sort of things come next on the channel. Links down in the video description if you're interested. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.